Okay? But anyway, we're going to talk about sovereignty. And so uh, we were self-governing 100%. And then the, the colonies got together and decided to uh, form an organization themselves. And so that was the Confederation. You had the Articles of a Confederation to, to set the rules. Well, that didn't really work out as well as, I guess, uh, some people wanted. So we had our Constitutional Convention and uh, revised it considerably and came up with the Constitution. So in the Constitution, if you read the last part of the Constitution, you'll find that the, uh, the people had decided to have to use this Constitution, but it would only be put into effect if nine of the states, nine of the colonies would agree. I guess they were states by then. And so when they got the nine to agree, then it was a go. If they couldn't get it, it would have been a no-go. So the, the states were contracted into this whole thing, okay? The people ordained it, but the states contracted into it, okay? This is why the states cannot back out, is because they have a contract that was not allowed to be broken, okay? Wow. Now, there's some strong argument about the states wanting to, the southern states wanted to break out because the northern states were not playing according to the rules. And the, the southern states wanted to hold closer to the Constitution, and the northern states, who were primarily manufacturing, were more into uh, the admiralty style of operating. So that created quite a, a difference of opinion. I've seen the actual letter that was, that, uh, or order that was signed by President Lincoln authorizing the, the invasion of the, uh, or the declaration basically of war on the, on the southern states. And the official, the actual reason was failure to pay the taxes. By the Southerners. The, Southerner, the Southern states, you see the, the federal government got its funding from the states. And so they, they failed to pay their taxes, so therefore it had to be enforced. That was the legal reason. The public reason, of course, was slavery. They had to get round up the support of people, but, but the legal reason was that. So anyway, um, what do we got here? Okay, so um, interesting thing about sovereignty is I've pointed out to you by looking at the, uh, at the Constitution, looking at the preamble, you can see the relationship. We ordain and establish it. So right there, that shows our relationship, and there's nothing that in there that says we gave it up. But California gets very specific. In California, if you look at section 11120, of the government code, and that's the bagley keene Act. Or if you look at Section 54950 of the California Government Code, which is known as the Ralph M. Brown Act, both of them have identical wording. And if you look here in the uh, bagley keene Act, it says right there in the third paragraph, the people of this state do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies which serve them. That's a pretty clear statement to me. You look at the, uh, at the California Government Code, the uh, Ralph M. Brown Act, and it says in the second paragraph, the people of this state do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies which serve them. <laughs> now, there is one interesting difference between the two statements, and that is that in the first one, state is lowercase, and the second one, state is capitalized. Why is that? Don't know. But it doesn't matter. I did not yield my sovereignty. Whatever interpretation they make does not apply to me. That's the beauty of this whole concept, is that a lot of these things that might be important when you're inside their system suddenly become meaningless when they're outside the system. Okay? So we're above the Constitution. We created the Constitution. The Constitution says right in the Constitution of the United States that we ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. It wasn't for the people. It was for the United States of America. 
Okay? So that's why it doesn't apply to you or me. It applies to them. And it's more than one.